competition drive standards upwards, uh, an increased number in terms of going to Switzerland and uh, Doha, the intense pressure in training and competition uh, will hopefully give us uh, a better opportunity to see our players under the stress levels which they'll experience uh, in, the, in those uh, foreign parts and uh, picking the best available 31 uh, to represent Wales in Rugby World Cup. I think there's quality in that in that bigger group. Um, you know, a good mix of experience, uh, some new faces, on the back of some strong performances. Um, hopefully, they'll they'll push some of the uh, more experienced members on. We benefited from that four years ago, and uh, it'll be much the same again. You know, and uh, you know, th there's genuine competition uh, for the final 31 places in in that squad. So, uh, yeah. That's what we're looking forward to. Well, I think uh, it's about picking uh, the best play players in form. Uh, I think that uh, we watched Ross over the last couple of months uh, and obviously uh, Thomas was uh, with us in the uh, Six Nations and came in for, for camp for the last couple of weeks. And I think it's going to drive standards. I think that the competition in the back row uh, over the last sort of four years, the mainstay of that back row in uh, Toby and... Justin and Sam and Dan uh, needs competition and uh, we think that uh, along with Dan Baker and Ross Moriarty we'll look at that competition area and hopefully strive standards and keep players on their toes and uh, I think that's a, a vital ingredient to a successful Rugby World Cup squad that c could be announced uh, you know, in August. You've got to have nine front row forwards in your final squad you know there's four in each of those spots at the moment um, and there's all four of those players in in those spots, uh, uh, you know, they're high quality. Um, you know, same in the second row point of view. You know, Dom Day, somebody who's been on the radar um, recently. He's got a bit more physicality into, into his game. Uh, deserves the opportunity to see how he he measures up against um, what what has been a settled second row with regards to Jake Ball, uh, Bradley, Luke, and Alan Wynn, You know, so. Um, in the, in the back row, similarly, um, you know, we, we've got a way with really rotating, uh, for want of a better word, Toby Fallado, Justin Tipperick, Sam Warburton, and Dan Lydiat. Um, you know, James King has been given the opportunity and, you know, he's putting Dan Lydiat under quite a bit of um, pressure at the Ospreys. It was towards the end of the season. And just feel that someone like Ross Moriarty have got the, has got the qualities really to, to push. Uh, in several areas of the game, you know, as a as a ball carrier, um, he showed, you know, as recently as yesterday, how effective he can be going forward. Um, he's got good offloading ability. Um, you know, he's sound at set piece. So, you know, a couple of a couple of names. You know, James Davis has been outstanding over the ball for the Scarlets. Um, Josh Navidi, we got his ball carrying for the Blues. Aaron Shingler, you know, nobody better than Aaron in, in the lineout. But I think. You know, um, pound for pound, I think Ross is going to ask uh, a few more questions uh, of those around him in that in that back row spot. So, um, you know, I think there's there's quality throughout, and uh, it'll be it'll be a tough tough call really on, on a couple of those players when when it comes down to be whittled down to 31. I think that uh, over the last four years, you know, 17 players <clears throat> who have been announced today represented us back in 2011. There's a f fair amount of continuity. Uh, when you've seen uh, you know Warren Gatland's squad over the last two three years, I think we've got a lot of experience uh, that have played in big matches, in Grand Slams, in Rugby World Cup semi-finals, and we need to get a lot of competition back into this squad. And we feel the players that the new caps that we've named will certainly uh, enhance and accelerate that process. George has come through all the protocols of running. Uh, he's up and running. He can do his generic fitness. Uh, he hasn't gone through the contact protocols, but as you can well imagine, pre-season and training, uh, we don't have to go uh, near the contact protocols yet. We will leave that probably till you know July, end of July, because ultimately we want to make sure George is right, 100%. Uh, and uh, you know, delighted that over the last sort of uh, you know six, seven weeks, that common sense with injuries, head injuries, has taken place, and in, in particular. You know, with George, so he's raring to go. He hasn't played too much rugby, as we all know, but uh, obviously we'll look at the contact protocols. You know, later on in July. I believe that he's done all the running tests, um, so it, it just leaves a little bit of the contact stuff 
and that can come at a later date. Obviously, uh, there's no rush for that. So, uh, you know, I think he's he's coming along well. Um, no doubt he's benefiting from, from some uh, air up in Anglesey and uh, mother's cooking. So um, that always does the trick for me anyway.